Hey everyone, this is Nick, and you might have heard of a little complicated social network called Mastodon. Hey, just because you understand it perfectly doesn't mean everyone does. Because Mastodon can be confusing, and while it offers the same basic service as Twitter, it's a very different platform. So here's a comprehensive guide on how to join, how to find people to follow, how to use Mastodon, and the general etiquette to follow and also how to follow up with this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab or Grafana to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. So let's start with what Mastodon is, because it's absolutely insane the number of websites and articles and videos that just completely fail to explain that. Let's hope I can manage it better. So Mastodon is a social network. It lets you write short messages that other people can read and answer to, and it lets you read and answer to what other people have posted. It basically has the very same function as Twitter. But instead of tweets, the short messages are called posts or toots, which is a very dumb name that I will never use. But also tweets was a super dumb name as well to describe a short message, especially when the French tried to use their own word for it. Un gazouillis. Now, where Mastodon differs from Twitter is that it's not just controlled and hosted by a single company with only one login page to create an account and access the service. It's made of plenty of individual servers, also called instances. And you create an account and log in onto the server that you have picked. And all of these servers can talk to each other so you can follow people from any server and people from any other server can follow you as well. And each server can have different rules for moderation or character limit and a lot more things. So basically, Mastodon is a platform that serves the same purpose as Twitter, but it's open source, it's not owned by a single company, and it's made up of multiple different servers that all talk to each other to form one single social network. So how do you join? Well, the first step is to pick a server. Since Mastodon is made of multiple independent servers, you have to pick one to join. And that server is where you will create the account and log in. Think of it as creating your email account. You have to pick an email provider, you have to create an account, and when you need to log in, you log in onto that specific email provider. But you can still exchange email with everybody else. You're not limited to the people who are on the same provider as you, thankfully. No, mom, I did not receive your PowerPoint. You need to use Gmail, I don't have a Yahoo Mail account. To pick a server, you have a handy short list on joinmastodon.com slash servers. Not all of them are here, but there's a handy selection from different regions and with different interests. Certain servers aim to create communities centered around a shared interest or identity, like tech, food and wine, or veganism and some are just generalist servers. Choosing a server based on a specific interest or community will not prevent you from talking to everyone else on every other server, unless you absolutely want to stay in your safe and comfortable bubble, in which case you absolutely can and you can never follow anyone from any other server like a social media hermit. Some servers will let you join immediately, just like any traditional social media app and some will ask you to apply for an account because they vet who can join to ensure that the conversation stays civil and polite or to avoid trolling and harassment. You can just choose any server that talks about the stuff you find interesting or a journalist server, and you can create or apply for an account by clicking on the button on the website. 
and you will have a nice list of the moderation guidelines that you will have to follow on that specific server. If you don't agree with them, you're free to pick another server, of course. And if no server has moderation rules that agree with you, then you're probably a horrible human being, but that's very unlikely, or you wouldn't be watching this video. But still, in that case, you can create your own Mastodon server and plug into the wider network of Mastodon servers, but that's not the point of this video. And if you're wondering, your handle is in two parts with two at symbols. The first one is your actual handle, and the second is the server on which your account has been created. Mine, for example, is at the Linux exp at mastodon.social. So once you have your account, it's time to actually use Mastodon. So let's look at the clients. The first obvious one is the web interface. Just use the server's URL in your web browser. For example, for me, it's mastodon.social. It works on desktop and on mobile, and by default, you will get your user on the left column with a text field to start posting. You'll get the contents of your timeline in the middle and the navigation items on the right. On the mobile website, your user is in the top right next to the publish button that lets you write something and the navigation items are on the right as well. We'll explore all of that in a minute. Don't worry, it's actually super simple. If you prefer using mobile apps on your phone, there are plenty of choices. The official applications are good enough for Android and iOS, but third-party clients are also allowed, and a lot of them are listed on joinmastodon.com apps. One that has been heavily recommended is Megalodon for Android, which adds a few features that the official app doesn't have. Personally, I found the official ones more than enough for my needs, and I would recommend that you start with them and move on to something else if you want once you're more familiar with Mastodon. Experimented Mastodon users will probably also recommend plenty of great clients down there in the comments. But if you want to jump the shark, then you can always start with Megalodon. So let's look at the interface. I will take the mobile app as a reference, but all of its features are also on the web version for desktop and mobile. The first thing is your profile. To edit and complete it, just tap your user photo and click the edit button. You should probably write a short bio with a few hashtags to let people find you if you want. You can also add links to your various other socials and you'll notice that's where you can be verified. This implies having your own website. It's an external verification. You copy a link to your Mastodon profile into the code of your website and it will show up in green like this with a check mark. It's not perfect because you need a website. People who follow you also need to know that this is the website you should be associated with and they also have to open your profiles about tab to actually see if you're verified. But all in all, it's still better than Twitter Blue. In terms of interface, the app is simple. By default, your timeline in the home tab of the mobile app will show posts from everyone you follow. They're in chronological order, no algorithmic shenanigans here at all. The search tab lets you look for people to follow. You have a search field and tabs. The first tab will by default show you a list of suggested posts that are generally just popular ones on any Mastodon server. The hashtag tab shows the latest trending hashtags. The news tab shows various news articles that have generated a lot of posts recently. The community tab contains what we call the local timeline, which is a feed that shows all the posts from everyone in your server whether you follow them or not. And the For You tab is a suggestion of people to follow based on the people you already follow. Basically, that search tab will be a fantastic tool to let you find people you actually want to follow. And then you have your Post button, which is the button at the bottom in the middle. We'll talk about that in a minute. And finally, you get your Notifications tab. Inside there, the Everything tab shows you every interaction and the Mentions tab only shows written replies to your posts. There's one feature that the default official apps don't have, but that you will have on certain third-party clients and on the web, and it's the federated timeline. It's a list of every single post from every single Mastodon user on every single server that the one you're on has agreed to talk to. The servers that your instance has blocked obviously will not appear in there. So on Mastodon, you basically have three timelines. You have your home tab, which is the default, and the same behavior as on Twitter. It's all the people you follow, whatever server they're on. 
Then you have the local timeline, which contains all the posts from all the people on your server, whether you follow them or not. And then you have the federated timeline, which is just a giant dump of every post from everyone on every server your own instance can talk to. I absolutely never use the federated timeline, but you might find a use for it. Okay, now let's see how you can interact with other people. When looking at what someone has posted, you have a few options. You can reply, which is basically just writing a response. You can boost, which is exactly like a retweet on Twitter. You're posting to your followers the message you're boosting as is, without any commentary. There are no quotes for now on Mastodon. You can't post something from someone else with added commentary. And that's voluntary because this feature is generally just used to harass people on Twitter. Then you can favorite a post, which is that little star button. It doesn't do anything specific apart from letting the author of the post know that you like what they posted. You can share a post, of course, and you also have a three dot menu. It lets you mute a user so you won't see anything from them, block a user so they can't even interact with you or see what you posted, or you can report a user if you feel that they really crossed a line. And finally, you can bookmark their post to find it later. These are basically the exact same interactions as what you can do on Twitter, except that you cannot quote a post from someone for better or for worse. But don't worry, you can still be snarky and subtweet people. Now, if you want to write a post, then you just hit the post button on the mobile app, or you'll start writing on the left column on the desktop. Posts have a character limit that your server sets. By default, it's 500, but it can be more or less. If your server allows for more characters, don't worry, other people that have a smaller limit will still see your entire message. You can add hashtags, like on Twitter, by just typing the hashtag symbol, and you can mention people by typing the at symbol. The app will suggest accounts and hashtags as you type. Of course, you can embed images, you can also add polls with up to four options, and you can add content warnings. These are basically a filter that will hide the content of your post behind blur and some text. People will only see the text you wrote in the content warning, and if they want to see the actual post, they will have to click on it. Very, very useful when discussing topics that a lot of people might not want to be exposed to, like movie spoilers, not safe for work content, politics, or the fact that you use Arch Linux. Finally, you can also pick who will see your post, either only the people you mention, which is the only way to write a direct message on Mastodon, all your followers, or everyone. Oh, and also, you can edit your posts whenever you want for free, but not on the official mobile apps just yet. You can do it on third-party clients and on the web versions. Now, Mastodon might behave more or less like Twitter, but it doesn't mean the conventions are the exact same. There are a few behaviors that are kind of expected on Mastodon, or just helpful. And there's also a few tips that are useful to know. First, when writing posts, if you add an image, use the description and fill it in. A lot of people on Mastodon do, it takes seconds to describe the image, and it will help everyone who is visually impaired. It's just nicer. Second, use content warnings liberally. Some servers have moderation rules that say what has to be behind a content warning, but if you're in doubt if what you're talking about will be weird, offensive, or just not great to see when scrolling a timeline, Hide it behind a content warning. It takes seconds and it's way better for everyone. And you can also use it to make your post more fun. Like I could clickbait people into seeing a post about a video by writing a very catchy title in a content warning. Or you could write the start of a joke in a content warning and the end of the joke in the post itself. It can be playful and it's also very useful for other people. So use it. Third, use the sensitive content filter for images very liberally as well. You can find it on some third-party clients and on the web versions, the official mobile apps don't have it yet. Why would you want to do that? Well, because not everyone wants to see screenshots of gory games or pictures of spiders, for example. Hiding these makes sure that people have a nice time when they scroll. Think of that filter as an additional content warning, but just for the image itself. Okay, but all of this is completely useless if your timeline is empty, so how do you actually find people you can follow? Well, the first thing is, do you already have a Twitter account with people you follow? If you do, there are some tools you can use to automatically find the Mastodon profiles of people you followed on Twitter. The more useful one I found is called Move to Dawn. 
You log in with your Twitter account, then your Mastodon account, and it will look at your Twitter follows, find the ones that are on Mastodon and offer you to follow them individually or follow them all in one click. It's a very easy first step, but if you're not a Twitter user, then you'll have to find people manually. The first place to check is on your local timeline, using the local tab on the web or in the search, then community tab on the mobile app. This is where people who share your hobbies or interests will be talking and where you can find interesting people to follow. Next is using hashtags. You can actually follow hashtags on Mastodon. Doing so means that all posts using that hashtag from all the servers your own instance talks to will appear in your timeline. This lets you follow a topic instead of following people. And in turn, it will make people that talk about that topic appear in your home timeline, where you can decide to follow them individually. To follow a hashtag, just click on it and click the follow button. And then on plenty of websites, people will share their own Mastodon profile. Click on it to view it and follow it. And that's it. Now you know everything you need to, to understand how it works, how to use Mastodon and how to behave on it. Of course, Mastodon is part of what we call the Fediverse, which is a giant social network regrouping many different services, like Mastodon or PixelFed, which is an Instagram alternative, or Peertube, a YouTube alternative. And all of these services can talk to each other. So you could, for example, follow a Peertube channel using Mastodon. So you will have a new post every time that channel posts a new video, but you'll get that post on Mastodon directly. If you want to know more about the Fediverse, I have a quick start guide linked in the description of the video. And I also have this segue to today's sponsor. If you're looking for a new computer to run Linux on, stop buying Windows computers and trying to slap your favorite distro on it. Buy something from Tuxedo, because the computers that they develop and ship are made to run Linux out of the box. They pick the hardware specifically for Linux to run on it. And they have a big range that should fit every price point and every need from the smallest affordable laptop to the biggest ultrabook or workstation tower. They're all customizable, configurable. You can open them, repair them, exchange the SSD and the RAM. You have plenty of CPU, GPU, RAM options, and you can even customize your own keyboard layout on your laptop or your own logo on the lid of the laptop. So if you need a new device and you want to run Linux on it, and you want to make sure that the manufacturer you buy from supports Linux and Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a device from Tuxedo. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoyed the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video. There's a PayPal link in the description and there are links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast every Monday where I talk about Linux, tech, open source, the channel, everything personal, everything generally for about half an hour every Monday. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So if you're interested, both links are down there. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.